Hello, and welcome to part three in our three part series on creating a project in Kep Server 5. In part three, we're going to create uh, several tags, and these tags are going to be to a Wildbus device, that's the channel and device that we created. And this device is providing temperature data from a temperature probe that's sitting here in my office. So the first thing we'll do is we are going to click to add a tag. Now we can add, there are several places we can do this. We could click to add a new tag group. And this would create a subgroup within the project for tags. We could click to add a new tag. And that's in the button bar. Or we can click the add tag uh, prompt in the item view of the server. And that's where I'm going to click. Tag property window opens up. First thing we're going to do is create the uh, add the tag name. So this is uh, my temperature tag. And I'm going to just call it temp. And it's in degrees centigrade. So I'll give it an underscore C. It's at Modbus holding register 1. And I'm going to give it a description. Uh, temperature and degrees C. So now I could click to add the tag. I could apply it. Or I could validate it. If I did that, it's going to give, because data type is set to default, it's going to choose the default data type. Default data type for Modbus holding registers is a word. Uh, data type. This is uh, a temperature and it's in float, so I need to change that default. And I'm going to change that. I'm going to go down and select float. So if you want to know what data types are supported by certain addresses in the driver or what the default data type is, if you click on the driver help file for the uh, driver that you're using, look in the addressing topic. You'll see a list for models uh, or just generically for the entire driver of all the addresses that are supported. And beside each address range description, they'll have a section for uh, data type. And the default data type is always bolded. So that way you know what the uh, default data type is for that address. Um, a little hint. If it's a Boolean address, the default data type is probably going to be Boolean. And typically for analog data types, the default is Word. So I've set the data type. Now the next uh, section is client access. The default is always read-write. Um, and in holding registers, you can read and write to them. I happen to know that I cannot write to this temperature value in the PLC, so I'm going to just change my client access to read only. That way there's no confusion. The last piece here in data properties is the scan rate. Now the scan rate is for non-OPC clients. So if you're connecting with Excel or you're connecting with Wonderware or uh, GE's iFix, these all have native interfaces. Uh, for Excel it's DDE, for Wonderware it's Fast DDE Suite Link. Um, for iFix, it's PDB and IO. So these don't do OPC requests and responses, and therefore there's no scan rate that's passed to the server when they connect. They use this scan rate that's set here. That's what's used to pull the data for this address. All right, so I'm going to apply this. Now I have two other pieces of data that I need to add. Now, I could very easily just click the Add New Tag button here. Um, I'm going to duplicate it just to show you what happens when we duplicate tags. So I'm going to click Duplicate. You'll see that it added a 1 to the tag name. So if this tag name was actually a numbered tag name, it would increment the number by 1. It incremented the address by 1. So this is going to be the Dew Point tag. And it's also in degrees centigrade. And this is at holding register 3. A quick note on the addressing here. The Modbus registers are 16-bit registers. And the data is floating point data. So 
floating point data is 32 bit data and therefore it spans two registers within a device. If I had used the next consecutive address, then I would actually be getting part of the data from the temperature showing up in my dew point. So I don't want that to happen. It's uh, important that you are aware of how data is uh, spread out or, or entered into your device. So I'm going to apply that and uh, actually I'm going to make a correction. I applied it but I'm going to I'm going to update it. I need to change my description. So that's the dew point. And now I'm going to apply that change. And I'm going to duplicate one more time and I'm going to make this the humidity. And that's at holding register 5. And the description, it's not in degree centigrade, it is just humidity. And it's also floating point data. I'm going to apply that. Now before I close this tag property, I want to explain scaling. So there's a second tab in the tag properties, which is scaling. So we offer two types of scaling, linear and square root. The formulas for these types of scaling can be found within the tag properties section of the server help file. Um, square root scaling provides high precision. Uh, linear scaling is uh, pretty much a, a linear mathematical function. If, for instance, if I was scaling a tag from 0 to 1000 to 0 to 100, then it would literally be dividing the, the raw value by 100 to get the new uh, the new value. Um, so the way that it works is you have your raw value which is the what is coming in to the server so in this case it's float but say I had a sensor that was sending floating point data but it was using sending that in raw format in, in an integer format and you see that a lot with uh, small PID controllers and things where they'll ha have a temperature that they're showing on their faceplate which is in you know it might say 70.3 and when they send that data from a to a server like ours when we've requested the data from it it would show us 703 because it sent it in integer format and we have to scale that so you would set your high and low scaled value the raw value and you would set your high and low scaled value and then that scaling would be done so that you had your true temperature value you choose the data type that you want and you can clamp the scaled values we do this because sometimes a input will actually send a value higher than the expected or calibrated high value point and when you start getting above that set value that set high value the actual scale value will start to deviate due to the way the mathematics works for the scaling so you might want to just clamp that or you may just not want to show anything that goes higher than your scale value is so if you clamp it anything that goes higher on the raw side is just going to be clamped at the, the scaled high value side the last uh, setting here is negate value and that allows us to literally multiply the scale value by negative one and we're starting to see devices now that will have a they might have a raw value of 0 to 500 and they need to show a scaled value of 0 to minus 50. So you would set up your normal linear scaling and then you would check this negate scaled value and it, like I said, literally multiplies the scaled value result by negative 1. So we're going to go ahead and close this and we're all set for tags. Now we can go ahead and open our quick client and hopefully see some data. So we open the quick client. It opens up and you'll see that it started out showing a data logger group. That's the first group that it defaults to. We don't have the data logger configured so there's nothing in this group. I'm going to go down and I'm going to click on my uh, device group and there's my scaled data and we should be seeing changing data in here. seeing any yet.
There we go. So, there we had some changing data. You see it's very humid in the office. Temperature's not changing that much. Climate controlled environment. So I want to thank you for taking the time to view these uh, three parts on creating a project in CAP Server 5. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact Capware Technical Support or Capware Sales. And be sure to order your new version of the server, CAP Server 5.